اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentioned in Surah Al-Qamar which is chapter number 54 from verse number 23 to 32 and he said the following كَذَّبَ الثَّمُودُ بِالنُّذُرُ فَقَالُوا أَبَشَرًا مِنَّا وَاحِدًا نَتَّبِعُهُ إِنَّا إِذَا لَفِي ظَلَالٍ وَسُعُورٍ أألقي الذكر عليه من بيننا بل هو كذاب أشر سيعلمون غدا من من الكذاب الأشر إنا مرسل الناقة فتنة لهم فارتقبهم واصطبر ونبئهم أن الماء قسمة بينهم كل شرب محتضر فنادوا صاحبهم فتعاطى فعقر فكيف كان عذابي ونذر إنا أرسلنا عليهم صيحة واحدة فكانوا فكانوا كهشيم المحتضر ولقد يسرنا القرآن للذكر فهل من متكر الله سبحانه وتعالى he revealed this particular passage in سورة القمر and he was discussing about the story of Thamud or the people of Thamud where Nabi Saleh alayhi salam he was sent to. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said the moment we have sent Thamud, we have sent Saleh to them they said فَقَالُوا أَبَشَرًا مِنَّا وَاحِدًا نَتَّبِعُهُ إِنَّا إِذَا لَفِي ضَلَالٍ وَسُعُورٍ They said a man alone among us Shall we follow him truly? Then we should be in error and distress. It was something of amazing for them to admit that a person like Saleh alayhi salam would be sent to them as a messenger to remind them their goal and purpose for them why they are living in this particular world. They said, he is a liar. How come not all of us here, we are chosen to become the messengers. How come the message only came to him and not to our leaders? Why is like this? And then they said, this person, he is lying. He's not saying the truth. Not only he is lying, but he has transgressed even the limits of lying. He is lying of a limit. This is what they were saying. سيعلمون غدا من الكذاب الأشر. الله سبحانه وتعالى هي سيد نبي صالح عليه السلام. Tomorrow they will come to know who is the liar, the one who have transgressed the limits of lying. Who is the one? And then he said, Allah سبحانه وتعالى نبي صالح. إن مرسل الناقة فتنة لهم. Verily we are sending the she camel as a test for them. They came to Nabi Saleh alayhi salam and they said, if you want us to believe you, then you should tell your God to extract or emerge the camel from this particular rock. So they need a sign. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he have extracted the camel from the rock. And subhanallah, it was a superb camel, a she camel. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after that he put the conditions for them. And he said, فَرْتَقِبُهُمْ وَاسْتَبِرْ He said, when this test come to your people, O Saleh, then you should be patient and you should watch them. Watch how they are going to behave if what they are saying is the truth. That they will follow the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَنَبِّئُهُمْ أَنَّ الْمَاءَ قِسْمَةٌ بَيْنَهُمْ and the condition for this is that you should inform them the water is to be shared between them. قَالَ هَذِهِ نَاقَةُ لَهَا شِرْبٌ وَلَكُمْ شِرْبُ يَوْمٍ مَعْلُومٍ In another place Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said, here is a she camel. 
it has a right to drink and you have a right to drink on a day known kullu shirbin muhtadar each one's right to drink being established subhanallah mujahid rahimahullah he mentioned he said allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he told them one day you should drink the water from this wall and the other day you let the camel to drink the water from that particular well. And then after that, Mujahid continued and he said, the day that the camel will be drinking the water on the well, they will be drinking the milk from the camel. Subhanallah. This is a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to them. To show that who is the greater who is the one in control and who is the one has the abilities and power to do everything and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said but they called their comrade and he took and he killed after that they went against the commands of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he said and he took means that he harmed the camel. He didn't only take the camel and slaughter him or killed him, but he harmed the camel. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and he killed her. Then he, how was my torment and my warnings? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he wants us to ponder upon his torments, upon his, how he punished the past generation. Inna arsalna alayhim sayhatan wahidatan fakanu kahashimim muhtadar Muhtadir Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Verily we sent against them a single sayha And we became And they became like straw al-muhtadar They are like dry grasses Whereby when you look at them They even give you the color of being burned This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he punished them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he ended up by saying, وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ فَهَلْ مِنْ مُدَّكِرِ Have we not made this Qur'an as a reminder to you? Have we not made this Qur'an as a guidance to you? As something that you should look upon and think about it in your life so that you can get the guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And after that, you can rectify your deeds. And after that, you can understand which one is the path of success and which one is the path of those who have transgressed the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today, my dear brother, I brought this particular story to you. The purpose of bringing this particular story to you is to tell you how we should treat the Quran in our lives. Most of us, we think by reciting the Qur'an only and by memorizing the Qur'an only, this is the full obligation upon us, upon the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this isn't the truth. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he revealed the Qur'an to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, this is hudan lil muttaqeen. It is the guidance especially for those who are fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those who are conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the guidance to them the guidance isn't supposed only to be read but the guidance the right of the guidance is for us to follow and implement it in our life most of us we treat the Quran as the book not only the book, but the book of poems, whereby we only recite it and that is enough in our life. But this will never benefit us in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To recite the Quran, it is something good. To memorize it, it is better. But when you understand the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and when you put it in your life, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the purpose of the Qur'an being revealed to us. And all of us here, we claim we are the believers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can you become the believer in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you don't understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Qur'an? One of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was sent to Abyssinia, 
And this was known by Ja'far radiallahu anhu. Ja'far, he was selected to be the leader to speak to the king. And he said to the king that for surely and for certainty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent the messenger in our life in order to guide us from the darkness which we were in to the light whereby the light is the truth which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he revealed to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this is the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentioned in the Quran in Surah Al-Ibrahim he said Alif Lam Ra Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka litukhrija al-nasa min al-dhulumat ila al-nur bi-idhni rabbihim this is a book which was revealed to you Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the main purpose of this revelation is to take people from the darkness to the light. But the darkness will not, the, the light will not come to your life only by reciting the Quran. The light will be observed in your, li in your life if you put the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala into practice. There is another passage in the Quran whereby I would like to share with you today. And this passage we can get in Surah Al-Furqan, which is chapter number 25. And you can find the passage between verse number 27 to verse number 30. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, وَيَوْمَ يَعَضُّ الظَّالِمُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِ اتَّخَذْتُ مَعَ الرَّسُولِ سَبِيلًا a person will say in that day of judgment, when a person is resurrected in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will say, the person who have done the wrong things in his life, he will bite his hands out of regretfulness in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the scholars of Quran, they said, this is not only biting the hands out of regretfulness, but the regret is followed with the sadness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, this person will say, Ya laytani attakhadtu ma'ar rasooli sabila. He will say, oh, I wish I would follow the path which Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he have came with in my life. I wish. And what is the path of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? If you ask yourself a question, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he didn't say only I will follow the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but he say I will follow the path of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aisha radhlanha, when she was asked about the characteristic of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, kana khulquhu al-Qur'an. He said his characters are the Qur'an. Subhanallah. When you look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, and when you look Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will see the practical Quran. This is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we are the people who follow Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is the path of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to put the Quran in his life. But who we are, we don't even identify ourselves. We only said we believe on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But do we follow the way Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has practiced different kind of things in his life. You find a person reciting Quran, but the things a person is implementing in his life, you will be shocked. You ask, are these Muslims or they are not Muslims? Are these people, the guidance have been revealed to them or the guidance have been revealed to another generation, not to them? This is the reality in our life regarding how we treat the Quran, regarding how we take the Quran in our life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, a person who have done the wrong things in his life, he will come in the day of judgment and he will regret in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, I wish, Ya Rabb, with the sadness in his heart, I wish, Ya Rabb, I would follow the path of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How would you understand his path if you don't want to understand the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah, he said, Ya waylata laytani lam attakhidh fulanan khalila. He said this person will continue putting forward his regrets in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, oh, woe to me. 
I wish I had not taken that one as my friend. Shaitan is deceiving us day and night. And one of the tactics of Shaitan, he want to make, he want to, to make us to believe that he is our closer friend. And we always take him as a closer friend. He will come to you and he will say, I'm giving you a sincere advice. Do this, do that. And leave the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Leave it aside. It has no benefit. By the way, you have much time. You're too young. Don't confuse yourself. And we take that particular advice and put it in our lives. And this person will come in the day of judgment. He will say, I wish I could not make that particular person a friend in my life. Friends, my dear brothers, friends, we need to be very careful in choosing the friends in our lives. We should be very dearly to those friends who keep us closer to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we should stay far away in our lives to those people who put us far from the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because none of the benefits will come to us in the day of judgment by entertaining the people who are going against the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. None of the benefits we will see them in the day of judgment by being with this kind of friends. Choose a friend, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a friend is he, is which he, is the one who you are. This is your friend. Some of the people they say, no, 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 I don't do what they do. It's not like that. You will do one day what they do. That's why you need to be closer to those people who are doing good in your life in order for you to become a better person in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, وَلَقَدْ أَظَلَّنِي عَنِ الذِّكْرِ بَعْدَ إِذْ جَاءَنِي وَكَانَ الشَّيْطَانُ لِلْإِنسَانِ خَذُولًا He led me away from the remembrance after it had come to me. And ever is Satan to man a deserter. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gave us a very good way of describing shaitan. Khadula is not someone who will only abandon you. Someone who will stay far away from you. But Khadula is a person who will abandon you at the right time when you need someone beside you. When you need a person to help you in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this person or this individual will stay far away from you and he will deny you and say, Ya Rabbi, I don't know who he is in my life. And for us, what we are doing, we are entertaining shaitan in our life and his whispers through our friends or direct to us. And we put it in our lives and we put aside the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what I want to conclude for today. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he will come in the day of judgment. And he will stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what he will say. وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ He will say, وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ Listen to this very carefully. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he will say, وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he will stand and he said, Ya Rabbi, you see those people from my nation? These are the people who have abandoned the Qur'an. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is the one who will say this in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine, my dear brothers, what will be our situation if we are the people who didn't implement the Qur'an in our life? What our situation will be in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Regrets upon regrets. Sadness, sadness upon sadness. This is what will cover us in that particular day. And we will dwell in the punishments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while we are regretting and we are very sad in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
who among us us claiming that he love Quran more than anything just simply because they are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who among us us here claiming that he loves Quran we can spend the time in games in playing and in different kind of uh, of things which have no meaning in the day of judgment we can spend a lot of time more than spending the time in the Quran how can we say we love Quran if we don't understand even how to read the Quran how can we say we love Quran if we don't do if we don't implement or striving in our life different kind of actions in order to understand the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how can we say this if our friend call us now let's go to the cinema wallahi we will take a call and we will take our clothes we'll put our clothes on and follow our friends and we'll go cinema together but if someone say to you sit down and recite quran you say i am busy you are busy doing what watching youtube videos or playing games this is what makes you busy in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Wallahi, we should be ashamed of ourselves. Wallahi, we should be ashamed of ourselves in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how we treat his book. Today, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of his mercy and favors, he has revealed the Quran to us. And this is how much we treat the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our lives. My dear brothers, we need to be serious in our life. Otherwise, the punishments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not be far from our lives. We need to be very serious. We have the classes of Quran in this masjid for this society. We have the classes of Quran. We have just started the classes of Quran. How many among us in this particular society, they have registered for these particular classes? It's not only the classes of Quran, but your recitation will be tested, your tajweed will be tested. Not only that, we have a special session for you to understand the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Means that the meaning of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is discussed. Suddenly enough, we have the time to sit at the food court for two hours, but we have no one hour to spend for the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sadly enough, we can entertain our business for hours and hours, but we have no minutes to spend on the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our, our hearts are not shaken even a little bit. Don't you cry for yourself when you are resurrected and stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have nothing. Who will help you? Who will help you if not your deeds? The deeds you have gotten from the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولوالدي ولوالديكم والجميع المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم وهو البر الكريم. الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم صلاة وسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. My dear Muslims, it's time for us to wake up and to understand what are the most important things in our life and what are those things which are least important in our life. And it's time for us to put in action the words of Allah subhanahu wa taala before it's too late. It's time for us, my dear brothers, to put in action. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he have guided us through, through his words, through Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in order for us to resurrect, reform again this particular ummah to its dignity, which, which was observed during the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is time we are youth. We can do this. There is none of us was born like that, but we can do that. Abu Bakr bin Siddiq radiallahu anhu, he became a Muslim while he was 36 years old. And he was the best in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even though he became a Muslim when he was 36 years old. Radiallahu anhu. 
how old you are today we can do it but we should put in our mind that there is no time the time is now if you didn't take any action now you should take the action because we never we never know tomorrow what is going to happen tomorrow is the world of darkness we don't know if we are going to be alive or dead it is now the time for us to take action and wallahi thumma wallahi when we take actions by using the book of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we will see in our lives the guidance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we will see in our lives the blessings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we will see in our lives the masses of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we will see in our lives the forgiveness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our lives and we will testify to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala surely this is a true guidance from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let us stand all of us today on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us come back as the people who have regionized 100% to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Holding the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us die with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us be resurrected with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us be Ahlul Quran, the people of Quran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the day of judgment, when he called for the people of Quran, we will will be among of them may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among of them let us be the people of Quran these are the highest honored people in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us to be among of the people of Quran in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world as well as in the hereafter may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us to put into action his words in our life so that they can benefit us benefit our societies benefit our future generations and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make these particular words to be a testimony for us in the day of judgment. As a result, Allah out of his mercy will take us in Jannatul Firdaus. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fi al-akhirat hasanatan wa qina azab al-nar. Rabbana la tuzih kulubana ba'da idha hadaytana wa hablana min ladunka rahma innaka anta al-wahab wa aqimi salah.